Two, Pasitar Sam Lord Tuyenga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. How is the New Zealand economy placed to deal with global uncertainty created by debt problems in the United States and Europe? The Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, the government has taken several steps to ensure that New Zealand can deal with uh, what is likely to be ongoing fallout from very large debt problems in the US and Europe. Our financial system and our economy are both in better shape than a few years ago to manage these uncertainties. Uh, their main focus has been on getting on top of the growth of government debt by keeping it below 30 per cent of GDP, uh, and we will be back in surplus by 2014-15. Uh, we've also pursued policies that have discouraged taking on more household debt, and households are responding positively to that. And we've also taken important measures to strengthen our financial system. Supplementary. What are some of the steps the government has taken to ensure New Zealand can minimise any impact from global debt problems? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's becoming increasingly apparent that foreign lenders have reduced appetites for lending to countries who want to run up more debt. So since 2008, the government has turned back 2008 forecasts of never-ending deficits and soaring debt by setting a path back to surplus in 2014-15. This will keep net crown debt below 30 per cent. We front-loaded the government's borrowing program uh, when market conditions were favourable uh, last year and earlier this year. We've introduced the biggest tax reform in 25 years, which rewards work and savings and discourages excessive borrowing and consumption and significantly tightens the tax rules on property speculation. Uh, also overhauled capital market regulations and established the Financial Markets Authority to give confidence to investors uh, and thereby encourage uh, more saving. Further supplementary to the Minister, what extra measures has the Reserve Bank taken to improve the resilience of New Zealand's financial system? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the Reserve Bank has uh, followed up on changes uh, given the unprecedented steps it had to take around 2008 with the global financial crisis. Uh, Non-bank deposit takers are now under Reserve Bank supervision, that is um, finance companies. The Reserve Bank is applying minimum capital adequacy and credit rating requirements to finance companies uh, which lost $8.5 billion over the last four years. In addition, the bank has introduced new core funding requirements for our banks which may require them to have 70 per cent of their funding to come from sources such as retail deposits and long-term wholesale funding, which makes them less reliant on volatile short-term international markets. Uh, and the government has ensured that, uh, sorry, the bank has ensured that in another financial crisis it can supply temporary liquidity to sound institutions. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Minister of Finance, given that uncertainty created by the United States debt crisis has been in part caused by the refusal of the Republican Party to compromise on sensible revenue measures, why should New Zealanders view his national government as any different when it refused to enter into bipartisan discussion on a capital gains tax despite authorities like the International Monetary Fund and the OECD saying it is an obvious requirement? For New Zealand. Mm. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, because this government has, uh, I think as now is becoming increasingly clear uh, internationally, a stable and sensible government making sound and considered decisions, which mean that we're one of the few developed countries now with positive economic prospects and financial stability. And that is a considerable achievement in the circumstances. Further supplementary. In the current uncertain global environment, why is it important that New Zealand continues with sound economic policies that get on top of the debt? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, it's pretty important because as the months tick by and financial markets realise the long-term impact of extremely high debt levels in, in Europe, uh, the UK and the US, uh, those lenders have become more nervous about governments who are running up debt. Uh, and in fact, uh, some governments are being forced into slashing public services, putting up taxes uh, and reducing welfare benefits to the elderly and to the vulnerable. 
Uh, this government has taken a series of balanced and considered measures to keep a lid on spending, uh, to get on top of growing debt and build a faster growing economy. Uh, we, certainly won't be, we certainly won't be advocating policies uh, which mean significant new uh, borrowings over and above those that are budgeted. Question number th I beg your pardon, is it a point of order, the Honourable Trevor? Uh, Mr Speaker, it relates to question number four. Uh, which was originally lodged to the Prime Minister, and I'd like to refer. Sorry, question question number three, uh, which relates uh, and refer you in particular uh, to the uh, interplay between uh, Speaker's rulings uh, 1451, 1452, uh, and 1454 uh, at, at least. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this question was originally lodged to the Prime Minister and asked about the Prime Minister's views and, and effectively whether he uh, was satisfied uh, with some statistics which related to a view that he expressed. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not, um, I'm not challenging the ability, um, and, and it's been well established under 1451, for a question to be transferred. Uh, but when that happens, Mr Speaker, uh, there is still a requirement uh, under 1454 that there is ministerial responsibility uh, for the question uh, as it has changed. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, under 1452, there is a right to make textual changes uh, provided they are entirely consequential. Uh, Mr Speaker, this question uh, was lodged to the Prime Minister and asked about his view. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's been transferred to the uh, Minister for Social Development and Employment and asks now about her view. Uh, my submission to you, Mr Speaker, is that, this, uh, that the second change uh, was not one which was necessary uh, in, the, in the context of the transfer, and in fact uh, it was not the area on which an opinion was sought. We are frankly not that interested in the view of that minister on this, we're interested and in asked a question uh, about the, the Prime Minister's uh, view uh, on, on a statement and, and what is uh, his statement and what has uh, happened uh, since that time. Uh, Mr Speaker, the problem would be, of course, uh, with the transfer that the Minister of Social Development doesn't have ministerial responsibility for the Prime Minister's views. Um, she has responsibility for her own views. And my submission to you, sir, is that the transfer of this question has resulted uh, in uh, something which, where the changes, the, the so-called consequential textual changes, have changed the meaning of the question to such an extent uh, in an obvious, you know, with the, I mean, the Prime Minister didn't want to ask, answer it, sir, but my view is that when it's in that order, form... Order, order, order. No, the member was doing fine to that point, but uh, I think I've heard sufficient on the point of order. Uh, he can't make allegations about whether a minister uh, wanted or didn't want to answer questions. The, the point the member raises is a perfectly uh, legitimate point of order. My ruling on the matter, though, would be this, that... Minister, the government is perfectly entitled to transfer questions from one minister to another or from the Prime Minister to another minister, except, except were the transfer to be anathema to uh, the obtaining of information. If, if the minister or Prime Minister being questioned could be the only person that had particular information, then, and it was transferred to make it not possible to obtain that information, then I would have real concerns about, in fact, uh, we'd, I, I, I suggest we'd start uh, uh, debating, negotiating whether or not the question could be transferred or not. Where, but where an opinion is being sought about the government's position on things, that is not, in my view, the same as, as where information, real information about government policy or about, about what has happened, where money has been spent, where that kind of information is being sought and only one minister can have that knowledge, that would be wrong for that question to be transferred. But where an opinion is being sought, I don't see that, the, uh, that it is uh, contrary to the, the, the bracket of speaker's rulings that the member mentions, where the question is directed to another, me another member and to make sense of the question, it asks whether that minister, to another minister I should say, whether that minister is satisfied with the most recent statistics on child health. Were it to 
were the question not to have been changed textually would have left the question meaningless. And, and yet, with this particular question, I don't believe it is, it is the kind of question that makes it wrong for it to be transferred where the, the Prime Minister could be the only person who had serious information that was important to this House. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. To the point, the point of order, Mr Speaker, I, 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 and I, I think I'm going to respectfully disagree with your view, sir. I, my view is that the Prime Minister is accountable in this House for opinions that he has expressed. He is the only person who can be accountable for opinions he has expressed. And so the transfer of that to other members, is, I, I accept it's not a asking for information, it's effectively asking for him whether he is satisfied with his government's delivery on his priorities. And my view is that no other minister can answer those questions, and it removes accountability in this House if the Prime Minister is allowed to duck those questions. Order. order. I won't tolerate that kind of language being used for the point of order. The member knows that a few years ago questions that sought opinions couldn't even be asked in this House. In the overall hierarchy of, of seriousness of questions, the member's been around long enough to know that opinions being sought, the Speaker can't even determine whether an answer is a, is a dressing question, really, whether opinions are sought. And to argue that where opinions are sought, questions can't be transferred, I believe, is not consistent with the, the standing orders of this House at all. As I said, if a question was seeking information where only one minister or the Prime Minister could be the only person who had that information, then it would be impeding the, uh, the, the process, pro processes of this House were such a question to be transferred. But where opinions are sought, forgive me, the members certainly entitled to disagree with me. I've got no problem with that. But my ruling on this matter is that that is not the kind of question that cannot be transferred. Well, I'm, I will hear the member further so long as he does not make any comment uh, that is derogatory of any other member under a point of order. Mr Speaker, in light, in light of the, your decision and the Prime Minister's decision uh, not to answer the question, we will not proceed with it. That's the uh, member's entitlement not to uh, proceed with the question. Question number four. Oh, point of order. Order. A point of order has been called. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, I seek Leader of the House to table an extract from Household Incomes in New Zealand, Trends and Indicators of Inequality and Hardship, 1982 to 2010, that shows that from 2004 inequality fell because of the work of working for families policy order. introduced by Labor. Order. The source of this document is... The, Order, I've asked the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, it's the Ministry of Social Development, Wellington, July 2011. I'll, uh, I'll, seek, order, I'll, I'll seek leave for this table, because of the contrary, seek leave for this, table be doc, uh, this document to be tabled. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Question number four, Catherine Dell.